Hello and welcome to, of course, we're back at the point in progress, continuing on with our hot game summer. I am, of course, Mario Vera. You know me very well. You also know uh, my fellow point in progress co-host, uh, Harv, the beard and the hair. How you doing, Harv? I'm doing well. I am doing well. I'm very excited for this. I haven't seen any of the Netflix stuff, so I'm very excited to see this. Yes, this is the first uh, day, of course, of Netflix Geeked Week. We're very excited. There's some awesome gaming stuff, gaming-related content that we're going to be talking about. And, of course, joining us from the one and only 6-1 Indie, Mike Townjo. How are you doing, Townjo? Return of the King, baby. It's back. Glover. That's right. Oh, Glover of Mario joins us. It's underneath you as well. <laughs> Mario, let me, let me tell you something. Yes, tell me Here at 6 one Indie. Yes. Here at 6 one Indie. This, since we started this company, there's one thing that's been true every summer. I can't lose. I cannot lose. <laughs> Skate 4, Glover, true. Sonic Frontiers, Sonic Origins, Sonic Central just got announced for tomorrow. Are yes. we getting a Sonic Heroes port? Well, Let's go. One can tell. I mean, Capcom is doing a thing on Monday. Eh, Capcom, good, whatever. This is the only Capcom thing I care about is this Resident Evil trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully Fee gets her ace attorney or whatever she likes. No, hopefully. for sure. For sure. <laughs> and like you were saying, I mean, I, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I've seen the Sega Frontiers uh, gameplay. Have you seen this yet? Yeah, like, I have. I've seen things, <laughs> you know, good, good and bad. Let's be hey, honest. tomorrow, tomorrow's the hands on impressions. We'll see what IGN has to say about it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see that. This game, like, I'm like, I know we're on a tangent already. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, Harf. Uh, <laughs> I want Sega. I want. I want Sega to make Sonic awesome. All right. I. I was looking at the vibe of this game. I was like, I'm. I'm. De I'm I like the vibe. Everything else, maybe not, but I'm liking the vibe. <laughs> By the way, just so we'll you know, uh, 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 Harv's camera is not on fire. It <laughs> yeah, is I was going to say. It's food <laughs> rising up. There's some steam coming from his room. <laughs> so Harv was, was uh, vaping for a second. <laughs> Got some uh, essence out there. You're just burning some essence out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Gotta, I gotta, I gotta get a little bad, uh, bad vibes out. You know. Well, let's hope that this trailer here from Netflix doesn't give us any bad vibes. Yes, we are talking about the new Resident Evil TV show, um, which is starring Lance Reddick and his family. So I'm very excited to see how this goes. Uh, this has looks like dual timelines here. It looks like it's also like future. Like this takes place after the game. It takes place now. But also, then there's a future time jump in the trailer. Let's see if this is any good, okay? So we had the movies, we had the remake, now we have the television show. They got a they're striking two for one three here. So let's see, let's see if this is gonna be the hitter. Let's find out. All right. And enjoy. Oh, oh, you have a muted. Woo! Ready? And yeah. Yeah. Well, they were done. They just the a bit. They're running up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Already. <laughs> Just getting, <laughs> getting that Netflix branding in there. Some of that Kate Bush. Bless you, Kate Bush. Umbrella, a company besieged by scandal, is now trying to reinvent itself. Yeah, so it's the sequel of the games. Yes. The old Umbrella made mistakes. The things we're working on today, they're going to change the world. I love that everything is just monochromic already in the building. What the hell? What oh. is that? Big worm boy. The drug contains the T virus. God. Last Reddick. So good. Billions will die. You want to keep your mouth shut. Oh, the, the oh. spider boss? All right. Is that yeah. a bagman? I saw a bagman. I got some liquors. Liquor. Liquors. Got the liquors. Fuck it. We got a chainsaw. <laughs> Do not resist. Every just complicated. We got some megalomaniacal like zealots. <laughs> yeah. We got gun akimbo. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrant. Okay. Coming next month. Is this a show or a movie? This it's is a, a TV show. Okay, it's the TV show. Okay. Yes. Okay, that makes that makes so much more sense then. All right. Yes. 
That makes a lot more sense. I was like, if this is a movie, there's so much happening oh, yeah. here. <laughs> Well, Honestly, yeah, I'll, I'll start with you, uh, Mike. Tell me what your thoughts on this trailer. I think this looks pretty great and could probably be, be the best Resident Evil adaptation we get. Yeah, I mean, majority of the stuff that you've seen here, like, there's a lot of stuff there that I recognize as Resident Evil, but at the same time, like, I don't as well. <laughs> right, and clearly, like, trying to adapt, like, the, the Resident Evil timeline as we know it failed multiple times yes even with the remake yes so like yeah do your own story yeah put some recon- recognizable things like the the spider and the, obviously the dogs and the tyrant and stuff like that yeah to kind of attach it to us like fans that love the, the games for what they are but do something different yeah set it in the future yeah umbrella is trying to rebrand themselves but cliche umbrella haha <laughs> those kooky bastards yeah yeah I think it looks great, and I love that the dogs in the in a Netflix produced thing look way better CG wise than the the remake do. Sure, yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, no, the liquor does, and the liquor is really cool, right? It looks good. Yeah, Harv, right, what are your thoughts right off the bat? I, I I have to agree with Mike. I think this looks better than it's supposed to look, and I'm glad it's a TV show because you could kind of flesh this out a little bit more yeah. as well. And having, yeah, having the touch, like, it doesn't need to be, like, we don't need to, like, see Resident Evil 2 again or Resident Evil 3 again. Have the touch those that are Resident Evil, you have those clearly in this trailer. Yes. But make your own story with it. Because, like, this is this is also a timeline that, that doesn't connect to any other game, right? This is their own way of looking at what happens in the future. Their own thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's its own thing. Um, obviously, this seems to take place in a world where Wesker is played by Lance Reddick. And he has a family. Um, as we can see here, the family definitely is in the future at some point, but they look like there's two diverging paths between the two sisters here. So I'm very curious on like what that entails and what that story is. Um, very curious about Wesker as a whole. Like again, does that past history exist in this show? Is this just a totally different Wesker? Like, what is so, all of that? You'd imagine it does because this is taking place in New Raccoon City. Yes, New Raccoon City, right? Which and, well, and Resident the, Evil Two would then exist, right? Right, and it'll, yeah, like the divergent past things. I know from the first trailer, like the the world got to shit. Like you can see right there is the London Underground, so it takes place in London. So I'm curious yes. what that's about. Yeah, and how do you yeah crossing the the water <laughs> into how that even goes through and how that affects the world as a as a whole. Now the movies have tried this in some capacity, right? After the third movie, there was completely like instinction in terms of like even Las Vegas was totally fucked <laughs> right. by the sand stuff. So uh, curious how they're exploring. Is they're going with that same theme here with Resident Evil, even though that's not very much a video gamey thing. It's very much in terms of just main timeline, right? Usually in a location, usually in sort of like. Um, outside of like uh, either it was a small town or it's in like some sort of other country. But now this is like, here is a, you know, post-apocalyptic world. And then here's like sort of sort of idyllic storytelling that we see earlier. I'm also curious, like how fast it's going to start ramping up to that. Um, I assume that both these storylines are going on at the same time. So I don't know. There's a lot of questions that I have, which is good because that's what you want. You don't want to be answered everything. But at the same time, I'm just curious because as a Resident Evil fan, I do want to satiate the history that I already know. And I feel like that might be the, the thing that's going to have to climb to get through that. So I don't know. What are, what are your thoughts on that, Harv? There's been so much bad Resident Evil. <laughs> There's just been so much bad Resident Evil that I think this one I feel has like I get like you're, you're talking about like, sorry, I was like so enthralled by the by the by the trailer there for a yeah, second. Yeah, of course. Um. Like it's a good you show. want, you want like the you want like the old touchstones to still be there, right? You yes. want that the things to be recognizable. I I I see enough of that in this trailer. Like I see that in this trailer. Yeah, I don't understand this worm thing because this worm thing. I don't know. The CGI does not look great on that. I will say that right now. <laughs> That's a big wormy, squirmy, whatever. Leave <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, but I do like this whole like area of like what New Raccoon City is and what 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 umbrella is doing and try to control like everything that's going on yeah it's a really really cool uh cool store like a cool way to put it and then also looking out like the outside world it seems like the outside world is desolate there's like nothing out there yeah just zombies and inside new Cap raccoon city is where like actual society lives which is a really really cool idea yeah do uh either of you know ingonerable no not even sure what that is so the the writers they they're the team behind a, another Netflix series I think Ingonerable. No, never. No, so that that's that's our only like really notable thing. I was trying to see like who was behind it. Like, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, no, I mean, visually, this is really cool. I just, again, like, if I just thought this was just a standard uh, zombie show, I'm like, all right, cool, this is interesting. But since it does have those touch tones of being at Resident Evil, I don't know, I, I, keep, I keep having questions. Like, why is Wesker in the way that he is? You know, uh, like, how much of the timeline are they using? How much of it is thrown away? That's, yeah. All those are silly, fun questions that I'm hopefully the show can have fun with. And maybe down the road, hey, Chris Redfield is still out there. Uh, Jill Valentine yeah. may still be out there. Who knows? Uh, maybe they're working together now because they used to be friends on stars. So uh, it's a lot of different possibilities that I do find interesting. I just have so many more questions. And I think that's probably the best thing we could say about this, right? Is that this yeah. is at least intriguing enough where we're like, hey, let's give this a shot. Yeah. yeah, I oh, think yeah. Uh, what this game, what what this game, what this series needs to do is just do the Sonic thing, where like it gives sure. you enough touchstones to make it fun for longtime fans, but tell your own story. Yeah, I wish Frank was here to see this because I know that Frank very much is adamant of like he just wants to see the games retold because he feels like sure. they could have some some leeway. But I also think that the games are dumb uh, <laughs> in the same way. That but I yeah, you boil it down, the game's stories yeah. are remarkably yeah, dumb. Yes. Yeah, they're not very uh, like you know. I don't put too much thought into them. I am also <laughs> one of the few people in the world that really likes <laughs> Welcome to Raccoon City. I actually had a hey, really great time. Mario, there is a good movie in that movie. There is. 100%. There is, but they just tried to do way too much with it. They totally do. Like, yo, if they just focused on Spencer Mansion or they just focused on yes. the Raccoon City stuff, it would be great. would have been awesome. But, hey, I still got that great shot at the end of that movie with Leon shooting a rocket launcher, so... I'm cool. I'm cool with I that. Thought gonna, I thought you were going to talk about the scene where it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm Wesker. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks, it's Ada. Like, it's like, oh, I can't see. I can't see. Oh, yeah. Puts the glasses on. <laughs> yeah. No, 100%. Uh, can't wait for that sequel. Okay. Yeah. yeah uh, please. please. There's two movies oh. that I want. I want that sequel, and I want Mortal Kombat 2. Make Mortal Kombat 2 happen, oh. and I want The Miz to be Johnny Case. Anyways, continue. What, what would you say? <laughs> No, I thought you were going to shout out a uh, second Power Rangers movie. Give me a oh, fucking yeah, Power Rangers too. movie. <laughs> oh, my God. The lo- oh, my God. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Harv, are you going to start watching the show on July 14th? I'm going to watch the first episode on July 14th, and I want to see how this show is. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing it's the Netflix thing where they're going to show the entire most thing. Most likely. Off. Oh, yeah. yeah. Most likely it's just going to drop it. Yeah, no, I'm going to watch this. I, I want to see what this is. and Because, like, like you said, Mario, I, I'm also a big Resident Evil fan. I, yes. I like I like the series. I like the games. Yes. The movies I could give or take. But, like, yeah, no, I am going to watch this for sure. Okay. And, Mike, are you going to watch this on July 14th? I am. I'm very excited to watch this on July 14th. This is going to be a, a Town Drought household family <laughs> viewing. <laughs> Where you, I force Kelsey to watch this, you, probably. <laughs> Kelsey and Grace the skeleton, or has Grace become now the uh, the pigeon? <laughs> no, Petey's right here. Petey, that's right. Yeah, Petey's behind me. Uh, Grace is in the attic, and, but no, we have we have Ariana. We have the roommate. <laughs> we do have that. All right. So with that, we also have yet another trailer. I'm going to go ahead and actually switch it out. One second. We're gonna check out the Sandman trailer. Uh, Mike, are you a comic book reader? I actually don't know if we a comic about reader. It. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely a comic reader. But I, ironically enough, I've never touched Sandman. I know it's been like on my backlog forever. Yeah, but I just never took the time to really dig into it. So like, I know a lot of the I like the, a lot of the imagery is familiar to me, and Got it. I've seen Neil Neil Gaiman's the the fucking homie. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I literally know nothing about Sandman. Okay, and. Uh, and Harv, have you actually ever heard of Sandman as a concept, as a comic book? No, no? I've never heard of this before. Well, this is perfect. I'm going to show you this first trailer here, and we're going to see if you got anything out of it, and I'm going to have to explain a lot. So let's go ahead. <laughs> it's got and nothing to do with Metallica, right? It has nothing to do with Metallica. <laughs> Hold on one second. Here. Uh, and hit the play button. I'm the king of dreams. Lover? Nightmare realm. What are you doing here, Etty? He's coming, isn't he? Yeah. Morpheus. The Aneromancer. You know the <laughs> Sandman. He's a fairy story, Etty. Is that fucking Clara? Yes. Doctor Who? It is. It is. Oh, I love her. I, yeah. oh. She's back, baby. Yes! <laughs>
Forgive me, sire of the palace, the realm. They are not as you left them. With you gone, oh, that's what's her face. I try to place her. She's in um. The dreams and nightmares ah. no longer seem to recognize HBO the horror series. Okay. Love Patch Country? No, the other one. With with Benny Boy. <laughs> this is August 5th. Oh, we got a little bird. A little birdie. Alright, that was the Sandman. Of course, yes, you called it earlier. It is a Neil Gaiman comic book. Now come to life for the first time. Uh, this, of course, is about the Master of Dreams, uh, who is a part of the Endless. He is captured at one point. You see this in the trailer. He is uh, taken from his realm, and he is finally released at one point. And this is sort of him coming back and uh, being part of this, wor this grand world of different uh, ideas is the best way to describe it. Um, it is a very ethereal book. It's very weird, very uh, abstract. Harv, what is your first impressions of the Sandman? What? <laughs> <laughs> this, interaction <is> so, <laughs> this interaction is so weird. <laughs> Where she just goes up to a lady and he's like, yo, the Sandman's coming. He's like, no, that's a fairy tale. No, nah, he's coming, dude. He's coming. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know what this is about. I This yeah. trailer didn't tell me anything, really. He's in a new world now. He's going back to his world. So, yes, he was... Okay, I'll try... I'm going to try and do my best to, like, break it down from the trailer here. So, there is this Anakin spell... Anakin must hate this show so much. Who? Anakin? Anakin hates Anakin. sand. Absolutely yeah. hates it. Would not last. So, this scene right here, he's basically being uh, conjured to be here. Um, I won't spoil the reasons why, because it's part of the story. But ultimately, he gets pulled... He was actually not the person that they were trying to get. They were actually trying to get somebody else. So oh, he, it was a mistake. So it was a here. mistake. So he ends up being uh, captured by this person that we'll meet in the show. I think is actually played by Charles Dance from uh, Game of Thrones. So that's actually kind of cool. Um, but he ultimately, yes, gets pulled from his place. And as he's taken away, it has come to ruin. Right. Everything that he's come to know is sort of not the same as he's left it. Um, he is finally freed at the end of this trailer when the cops shoot at the thing <laughs> and release him, um, which then he then goes back to his realm and sees that it's in decay. Um, from there, the story is expansive. He's also in control of nightmares. And so some of the nightmares have run free during this time. So one of those nightmares is actually the last character that we see in the trailer that like has a bloody eye. This guy, I'm fucking terrified of this guy. His name is the Corinthian. He has sunglasses and he has like a buzz cut and he looks like he's from the 50s. But when you open up, when he takes the glasses off, his eyes are teeth. <laughs> it's the one of the most cool. scariest, <laughs> coolest uh, things ever. And he's a serial killer, basically. Oh. But a lot, a lot of the show, a lot of the book is just this ethereal thing like these are gods and these are his... Um, the other gods that are in his life are his family members. Like death is one of the characters desire. Uh, delirium is another one. There's a bunch of different things, but the, the, the basis is sh shit. He got kidnapped and now he's going to come back and fix shit up in the terms of nightmares being released. So if that interests you in some capacity, I hope so. It, I love the book. It's out there and weird and he can turn into whatever the fuck object he wants to be. Clearly, he decides that, yo, I want to look like Edward Cullen <laughs> for a majority of this trailer. They named him Morpheus. Is that Morpheus? Morpheus is his actual name. Okay. But he's also yeah. called Dream. Or the one Iron Man, Iron Man, sir? Uh, you know, like Necromancer. Like, oh, this is what he can do. I have no idea what the uh, Iron I cannot tell you what that is. But I refer to him either as Morpheus, the Sandman, or, of course, uh, Dream. Dream is what he's mostly called by. And I don't know who that lady is. I don't know who any of these characters are. Um, the story that I've always followed, there's always this um, girl with, like, a specific colored hair, has dreams of Morpheus and the serial killer, and they're somewhat entwined. It's very much like if you ever... The way that I, I feel that the the books and what the movie would look like is in the same way like if you ever watched the movie the crow 
Where no. yes. just yeah. the, the thought and feelings of the darkness and stuff like in that city. That's how I what I think of the crow because it has that has the cure as the theme song is that song, and that's what I feel <laughs> when I think about this. This character over here. Let's see here, the girl in the field. That is his sister. That is death. So that is the embodiment of death. Um, the person that they were trying to capture at the beginning here was actually that her. Professor Lupin? Uh, I think he's on the show, actually. Whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> is it Lupin or it's uh, Gwendolyn Christie? Gwendolyn Christie is also on the show. Oh. Uh, Gwendolyn Christie is actually playing Lucifer. Which the Fox TV show was based on this character. Oh, okay. They're the same character. So, you know what this reminds Instead of a Netflix show, this reminds me of a BBC show. 100%. 100%. Oh, yeah. Very, very show, yeah, yeah. 100%. But this, of course, was a uh, DC Vertigo film. show, Ver- Vertigo comic book. So it, it's supposedly tied into the DC universe. I don't know how they're going to connect that if they decide to do that. They probably won't. No, yeah. it's because there there are issues of John Constantine shows up at one point, um, as well as uh, Batman has dealings with uh, the Sandman. I don't know. What are your what are your general thoughts? I know I just showed you a random ass trailer of a thing that you have no context for. Do you have any interest in anything that's like sort of like this mystical stuff or anything? I'm in. It's weird as fuck and I'm super in. Yeah. So you being so familiar with the comic, obviously, mm-hmm. um, can this succeed as a show? They have a lot. They have a lot ahead of them. Um, I, I bet. It, it's interesting that the show is being produced by Netflix because I don't think of prestige prestige dramas when i think of netflix i think of cheap sets and should have been hbo this should have been hbo when i think of it i think of a game of thrones and they have a lot of game of thrones actors in here and some of the stuff does look cool i mean there's this awesome thing but i will say looking at him he doesn't feel like the character that i other than he's pale right that's literally it yeah um in the comics his eyes are blackened out right so he has sort of like like a sort of ominous thing he just looks like a dude and i think that's gonna be the biggest hurdle that i need to go over is that he doesn't look like a god none of these people look like gods in my opinion they just look like people and i'm curious how that's gonna progress as i go along um but yeah I'm, i'm very curious like he is like responsible for like all the plays for uh, Shakespeare. Like there's a whole backstory of like how he's involved in history. And I wonder if how much the show is going to devolve and go into that in the same way. Is it just going to be about him hunting down these nightmares that have decided to, you know, run free since he's been gone. So I, now yeah, there is one thing that gives me hesitation. Yes. I'm not the biggest uh, David Goyer fan. That's another thing. He's also a part of this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. David Goyer though is responsible with a lot of the stuff that we've watched, but at the same time, uh, he's also kind of a shitbag. So, yeah, and they got um, the other person involved. Obviously, Gaiman is involved, and then um, Alan he- Alan Heinberg. Uh, he was a writer on Wonder Woman. Uh, he-, he produces a lot of the. He does like Gilmore Girls, The OC, Grey's Anatomy. Hey, those are which, all theoretically good shows. Theoretically sure. good shows. That's kind of the vibes I'm getting with like a lot of the production stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like and like like Netflix has a look now. Like unless you something we talked about before recording is that new Guillermo show. That Guillermo show has a look. Yes. Like that looks like a Guillermo like backed kind of thing. But this, yeah, this looks like Umbrella Academy and yes. all those like and I I adore Umbrella Academy, don't get me wrong, but yeah. like it's a, it's a Netflix show. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's not very much like how I think of the original source material, right? So there's elements here that I see that's like, oh, cool. That very much looks like certain aspects of it. But this is also one of those like it's supposed to be like a a, a Dada painting. Like it's supposed to look completely like crazy. So I, I'm wondering how much that's going to be translated on screen versus what it's on the page. There's so many great artists that worked on this story that I'm just curious sure. how it will look um, with the palettes that they have and will even be interesting because it's so I don't want to say sterile because that's when I think of Netflix shows in a lot of ways. A lot of their palettes can be very in one note. Um, yeah. Except, except for Stranger Things. That movie, that, that show is great. Um, <laughs> other than that, I don't know. I have my reservations at the same time. I'm like, I'm excited to see my favorite things come to life. Um, yeah. Succeed or just like I'm one of the few people that really liked Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> and that <laughs> has its issues as well. Um, sure. But at the same time, I'm, I always usually give things a second season. Um, this definitely looks like it's just mostly the first six issues of the comic. 
We'll see if it goes past that. Um, but yeah, and again, if there's no cure in this whole season, then you failed. That's just it. <laughs> I'm uh, something I, that just kind of clicked was like, I kind of wish they gave. It's gonna sound like very offensive towards like Goyer and like uh, and Gaiman and stuff like that, but I sure. wish they gave this a showrunner with some like gravitas it's like sure. mike flanagan being very successful oh in the horror God. space on netflix uh even we just kept seeing the the teaser for um adam's family like yeah. tim burton has a style that can yes. be adapted to netflix guillermo has a style like this deserved someone like somebody with like a distinct creative vision yes to avoid this sterile netflix look yeah 100 percent I feel like I'm I, I'm sounding negative towards it. Like I'm into it. I'm 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 yeah. intrigued. Like I, I'm excited for you to watch it and you give the thumbs up or thumbs down <laughs> and then I'll take it from there. Yes. Yeah. I also like the Halo show, so don't listen to any of my opinions. Just don't listen to any of my shit. You just like fucking Master Chief ass, you know? I do love Master, some Master Cheeks. Let's go. Master Cheeks, baby. Yeah. All right. Well, Harv, on August fourth, uh, will you be checking this out? I will not be checking this out. <laughs> I, I need, I need, yeah, you gotta tell me how it is when, when it first comes up because I'm not completely sold on this. Sure. Um, this looks like, this looks like Merlin, you know, like the Merlin show from like BBC and stuff like that. I can Kinda see that. It reminds me of that. I can see that. Really reminds me of that. And yeah. this interaction with this lady and the other lady, I'm so confused. She's just <sighs> like, she, like, I'm very confused of what's happening here. Again, I, I don't remember who they are in the comics. I can tell you if they're like uh, like otherworldly people because um, they just seem no. like too normal. The problem with the show is they just everyone looks like a normal person. Um, yeah, right. when, when you read the comic book, they're very distinct. Um, that's my only thing. So we shall see. Um, of course, I think the one uh, interesting aspect that I think people are just going to rail the show for is that some of the characters don't look like it. And there's an instance here where we see uh, the, the actress that plays Death Death traditionally in the comic book is a pale white lady. Uh, and here is a beautiful uh, African American woman who's going to play that character and probably own the fuck out of that role. And I'm very excited for that. But yeah, yeah, see, everyone's just going to probably just shit the bed. Oh, which yeah. is that. But I mean, that's like the same reason I think people are like, I haven't seen anything really, but I'm yeah. sure people are going to rail fucking Lance Reddick for, yeah, for Wesker. Wesker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking it's matter. Adaptation. It doesn't matter. It does not fucking matter at all. Let's write fucking rules. Fuck yeah, he does. All right. Um, my my this interpretation same question. when it comes to yeah, so like when that comes, it doesn't really matter to me, honestly. I'm yeah. curious. We'll see. As somebody who loves Doctor Who, as somebody who loves like Orphan Black and a lot of those BBC yes. productions, yes, yes, yes. This gives me those vibes, and I'm interested. Like, I think I, I just got to put the Netflix thing out of my mind, like, and sure. think of it like, oh, I'm just watching, like, I'm watching a BBC show. Yes. No, I think fair. I'd be super into it. That's fair. And some of those sets are not the greatest, but they try their best in a lot of ways. And Turn yeah. this show into a BBC show. <laughs> I Honestly, I wish it was. Um, yeah, same. I really wish it was. Yeah. But there are a lot Didn't of... Didn't this go through some, like, development yeah. hell also? Dude, right? Hell. Yeah. hell. It's been through so many processes. Originally, it was also going to be a movie not that long ago starring right. Joseph Gordon-Lovett as Morpheus. Um, and he was directing the movie. Um, but now this is this is the fully where the supposedly Neil Gaiman's fully on board with this. They're fully there in terms of every aspect. Wait, he's involved, yeah. yeah. He's involved in a way where he hasn't been before on any of the procedures of how they were making this uh, series. And so this is hopefully going to be the truest thing to his vision that he deems worthy. And so, hey, if he thinks it is cool, then I'll give it a shot. I'll make the judge if I decide that I want to keep going. That's all. I really wish now that season uh, Stranger Things is like gonna end. Granted, they're, I'm sure they're gonna do fucking spinoffs and stuff till yeah, we die. Well, there's one, there's like, one more season. season and maybe spinoffs after that, probably. Sure, but like with it, like with there being an end in sight, like this feels like a good contender for something for Netflix to go all in on. And yes. it's, right now, it seems like they're not. Like Netflix needs another thing. They do. Like we had House of Cards, we had yes. Stranger Things, we had whatever. Like we need to go. Like Netflix really needs like its star thing. Like how yeah. uh, Amazon has the boys. Like clearly, like the boys yes. is like Amazon's shit right now. Yeah, unless you miss Mansell, you're yeah. the boys. Literally it. Yeah. Yeah. No, one hundred percent. Is Sandman going to be it? Well, we're going to have to find out. But until then, we're just going to have to wait uh, until August fourth. This has been fun. Thank you guys for stopping by, checking out some of this geek stuff here over at Netflix. I know that we have a couple more days of stuff that's going to be announced. We'll probably come back. All and, week. Yeah, we'll come back and just take a look at those possibly and uh, to see if it's, you know, 
any cool things. Harv, where can people find you on the net? You can find me everywhere on at Beard and the Hair, Beard and the Hair Gaming on YouTube, but you can find me more importantly on Point in Progress right here. That's right. And Mike, where can we find this uh, hot gaming summer? Where can we where can we find all this stuff? Uh, you can find this hot gaming boy uh, on <laughs> at at Mix Soundro on Twitter. Uh, but yeah, on uh, at Six One Indie, um, I just made Six One dot com slash summer to keep track of all the hot gaming summer stuff that we are doing with our Point in Progress friends. Uh, yeah, a bunch of live reactions. We're doing a bunch of stuff on Twitch. Obviously, all the VODs will be on both of our YouTubes um, and podcasts later on once all the gaming summer stuff wraps up. Fantastic. And of course, you can find me over here at Point in Progress doing all the things, including participating in Hot Gaming Summer. This is going to be fantastic. Glover, thank you so much for also being a support character in this conversation. Thank Appreciate you so much. It. We're glad that you're back. Uh, but until next say. Not to say. Hot Glover Summer, baby. Hot Glover Summer. Hot Glover Summer. And with that, of course, uh, we have been, progress has been made, and it has been a fantastic time.